this the dimension would be on the right side so if we could try to recreate this we can either create it by having multiple sheets or if you wanted to be on a single sheet you have to actually bring this particular trend chart to be on the right so that's how it works i'll sh we'll try to create recreate something like this so and that will be that will be fine um the order of the columns isn't that important to me but the the line the trend line yeah. and the bullet chart um that type of visualization I I'm interested in yeah sure that's possible it's, yeah. and in one in one table and in the past I've had some challenges getting it to show in as one table mm -hmm. I get it So I just got some time in the morning. I was just like saw it very high level. I didn't really get much time to read about this. Whereas Tableau is concerned, it's not to say like how to say. You really do really not know like what does each of them mean. You just have to differentiate what the dimension, what are values, like what can be done, and what the end users need. That's it. So as you work on it, you will just know about each of them in detail. Like say like what does this particular indicator means it's not really much needed to the as a developer point of view it's not really needed so can we use this particular sheet to create a dashboard or would you like to suggest some other uh, uh, they're all essentially the same dashboard we currently use so if you, you look at the first sheet and the second sheet that's how uh, I uh, we currently view the dashboard and what I'd like to do is convert it to a dynamic tableau dashboard mm -hmm. um, but just to give you an idea uh, sheet one and sheet two are the current format mm -hmm. so it's a, a manual Excel table and and if the, the data for that month for that quality indicator doesn't meet the threshold then it's uh, red, and if it does need it, then it's green, mm -hmm. and and those are the summary values. And then in the next sheets, I I try to clean it up a little bit for the trending for Tableau, mm -hmm. and that's what I've been playing around with in Tableau. Mm -hmm. And then all the other sheets are are the data behind each of the different indicators, and in some cases there's some uh, uh, overlap, like uh, if you uh, scroll forward on the plus. Mm -hmm. Like the let's see the blood culture contamination yes and the recollect log mm -hmm. for example um, they're uh, quality indicators tied to the same uh, phlebotomist I'm sorry uh, blood blood culture contamination and clot specimens mm -hmm. so you'll see column A and column so column A here and then the next one blood culture contamination column A there overlap, mm -hmm. but there are two types of data tied to the same people to indicate there's a quality on how, how, how those people are performing their job. Mm -hmm. Get it. But then the, the sheet we looked at earlier on the left trending 15-16 tableau is summary data for the entire year for all the quality indicators and I tried to organize it so that it'd be easier to import it in Tableau. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's great that you have tried it. So usually there is something called we call it as data preparation. So when you have some sheets like this, if you give it to Tableau, Tableau will try to interpret using its own engine called data interpreter. So I would not say that it works very fine. It's I would give like uh, 7 or 8 out of 10 so sometimes it helps us on uh, making the even unstructured data to be a structured one but it's well and good if you have it on a structured data so we can, let's try like I'm not sure whether you have tried this on Tableau and uh,
to see how it looks i would like to try it for once and if it goes really well we can use this or if it's not going well we can use with the next sheet fine okay yeah sure so before i just gonna talk about the how to connect them and how to use the data interpreter i just go on to explain about the this particular layout which you see so this start page is where you gonna connect it or if you have uh, some already created dashboard you just gonna use one of these icons and open up those particular workbooks on the right you just got some the wish of the week like the one which i showed you on the tableau public like instead of showing the wish of the day this is gonna show you the wish of the week so if you just click it it will take you to the uh, tableau public to see how that particular dashboard works and you just have some videos and the help files which can you can make use of it and these are the sample workbooks which i opened it yesterday like the superstore and here when you click on more you can see all the uh, data sources i mean the all the databases which tableau can connect to like for example say i have as far as my experience is concerned i have used google sheets not much on google sheets but a little though and on the SQL Server and on the Tableau Server, the current project which I'm working, they already have a Tableau Server uh, published data source. So I'm just gonna use that particular thing. And I've not really much used. And as far as most of them, I try to use it on Excel or either on the Tableau Server data source. Okay. Yep. So. You just going on clicking the Excel. I'm just going to I just save the file on my desktop. So you have the file. You can add multiple files if you want to. Like this is our file, and this is our sheet which I just want to try it here. So it's going to try to interpret in this way. So it's kind of it's kind of like a pivot table. So like July to say June. These are the months. So I'm sorry. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna select them, or you can, I guess, shift works here. Or you just click uh, click on the columns and then shift and then add one. Mm hmm I'm just gonna make it a uh, pivot. So it's going to just make it uh, like pivot fields name and we can just rename it as something like months and this should be like the values for it. Sorry. So do we have all the columns which you require? I just want to make sure. Um, um, well, the key information is the, the the indicator, and so we have 13 quality monitors, but some of them have com different com components to them, and so you'll see the indicator value mm -hmm. here. So, so all of these numbers are part of the same quality indicator. And you see, so some lines, if they have the same number, it basically means they're part of the same quality monitor. Mm -hmm. Now, do we have all the columns? I just want to just make sure we don't miss up anything. Indicator reason for trending hold the months and assigned we have the same yeah well the key information for the quality indicator is the uh, threshold value the actual value and then whether it's uh, above or below because mm -hmm. if it's below mm -hmm. the threshold then it's good if it's above the threshold then it's bad and then we have to monitor it and, and develop an action plan to bring it under the threshold Mm -hmm. So that's the key information tied to the, the quality monitors. Mm -hmm. 
Just and so we would like like to see is um, so the actual value in relation to the threshold and then the trending. If over time, if there's multiple months that a, a quality indicator is not meeting the threshold, it's a problem. Mm -hmm. So that's the key information we want to understand, mm -hmm. and then and then see you know trending over time. Yeah, sure. And the other thing is like, do you have any uh, like say? We call it as primary key technically, but it, you can be considered as a row ID. So, do we have any row ID to differentiate or any particular? Like, for my understanding, if I'm right, the 13 has multiple indicators. I mean, sorry, not indicators really. 13 has multiple values for the solar for different months. So, is there any unique value which we can differentiate each of the rows? And that's why I'm not 100% sure. If I, I'm not really sure if it imported it correctly. Maybe if we look at the Excel file, I'm not sure if there's exactly the same number of ter rows under 13 because it seems like a lot. You see, like here, it's one, two, three, four, five. You see, 13 only has a single row here, but when you import it, it has a bunch. Uh, it's because, like, I've made the, like, say, the months to Maybe be on continuous. Month. Yeah, I just made this to be like this. Is actually, in the pivot table, I'm actually making it to be on a single column. I mean, this say like I'm just considering this like we have all the 10, 12 months here. So these 12 months, we are just gonna make it to be as as a two columns, so that it should be easier for the tableau to create charts. Let me show like if. We have like only one indicators per row, so the data is right. So I'm just not doing my changes on it. We can do some changes. I like to show you later. So I just wanna try to see how it goes. Indicators, 13 indicators so there are. And months, I'm just gonna make it months. And the indicators value to be here. Oh, and so how did you switch from the view before to this view? So you, how do you, how do you select that particular data? So, so. So I just drag so drop. You, oh, okay. Yeah, I'll just okay. explain it. Yeah, I just drag drop here and just renamed it. And if you just click on sheet one, it take, takes you to this view. Is that your question? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just clicked on the sheet one, which you can see. When for the first time it would be an orange color. So as I have clicked it, so it's just gonna be become a white in color. And I just recreating it, so I'm just making the indicator to be on the rows and the months to be on the columns and the indicators value to be on the text. And let me just make it. Oh no, um, let's see. Is it isn't it measure values? I think indicator value is just the number of the. You see, it, it's just the number of the. The number of the indicator. I don't think it's the actual result. Mm -hmm. Let me just try it. viewing the data. Like, if you just right-click on any particular data and make it view data, and click on full data, you can actually see the underlying data. I like to see how it looks. The values are actually 100%. So, it has. So the value is what we want. The, 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 the result. Yeah. And so. Text so it's actually showing you on integers. I'm just going to change it to a percentage. So I'm just clicking on values, right click, default properties, sorry. Um, all right. Just give me a minute. I'm just going to, it's actually, uh, by default, I just consider it as a dimension. I just want it as a measure and making it to be here. And yeah. Let me just try it for a minute. Yeah, I think it's sort of the indicator value. We want the, the the measure values in the table. You know, the green pill. It should be measure value instead of. Uh, oh, I get that. No, just, just allow me a minute. Value hundred percent. So having a percentage, it's actually taking it as an uh, string value, I just gonna make it like, or say like split, 
So having the split had made it the value to be a number. Can you see it? Uh, okay. So I'm just gonna hide this thing. So I just rename it as my values in. Okay, let it be value. We have something already before, so I'm just gonna make it values one. Going back here, so we have the values one here. So I'm just gonna use it. So it's just yeah, showing. Okay. So I would like to show it on the number format to show it with percentages. Well, but not all of them are percentage. <laughs> Some oh. of them are occurrences. Okay, okay. So how do you want to differentiate it? Like. Just let me just try in the sheets. Well, I guess that's my question for you. You see, like um, um, uh, one, two, and three are percentages. Uh, four mm -hmm. is is a number of occurrences, so that's mm -hmm. a distinct uh, number. So it can be one, two, three, four, five, and if it's less than ten, it's good. <laughs> okay, I get it. So we just have to have some. Like, let me just go back to the data source. Can you change it by row or? Yes, like I just have some, have to add some extra column to differentiate is a percentage or the number. So let me just try it if I can make it here or I'll just add it manually on the sheet so that it will help us to understand whether it's a percentage or it's a number. Let's, oh, okay. let, let me just try it here. Redoing it. Values, custom split. Or I can create a, the other solution is like I can create a calculator field which can differentiate instead of I doing manually here or here I can just making the values to be visible so I'm just writing a right click create a calculator field so I'm just gonna say it's percentage or number so if values contains these functions are very similar to Excel but I can explain you the most used functions later on the classes okay so, so I'm just gonna check if that was percentage and then it's gonna say percentage else it's gonna be a number and mm, let's see how it goes. So I guess this is showing the right ones. It's basically taking the null values. Like, as you could see here, these, it should be, yeah, it's actually wrong here. Yes? Well, the green pill is, is wrong. Like, instead of the, the MIN, it needs to be the measure values. Mm -hmm. I think we use indicator value instead of measure values. Oh, okay. Oh, we didn't. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, no, no, no. I just, I just changed it right now. Thanks for that. Like, uh, okay. Yeah. So, so is it showing the right ones? Yep. Looks like it. Yeah. This 2015. I guess we have something here. 
Mm. Yeah, 12, actually we could probably remove mm -hmm. the, the line for 12. We end up not measuring, so um, that whole line can be removed. There's no data. You see it says resolved. Yes. Yeah. So here it's actually blank. So here it is. It's blank on yes. for this. Okay. For 12, yeah. I'm just going to exclude it. This is very helpful. Yeah. <laughs> I like the fact that we're yeah. cleaning up the... Yes. You can have, we have multiple filters. So the one which I did turn right click and exclude is just adding it only for the particular view. But I can even add a like filters here. Do a right click here. Edit data source filters. And here filter, I'm just going to add a new one. So it's just going to say for indicators. Click OK. And I want to skip the twelfth one. So, can you see the twelve here? Oh, yeah, it's in the, the, the yeah. fourth one from the yes. top. Okay. So I'm just gonna take it and click on the exclude. So okay, and okay, and I'm if even if I remove here, you don't see it because I've added it into the data source itself. So whatever sheets you create, henceforth the you won't see the 12th indicator on the sheets. Okay, and then uh, for the rows, so if I wanted to just show the main one, the main indicator, and then collapse it so so that the main one is showing, and then when you click on it, it expands and shows the component indicators, would that be possible as well? Mm, indicator like so like collapse all the fours and so it will show only the first one and hide the other ones until you click on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me, we can, like let me just see it, how we can do it. You see like like four, the bottom one is the one that I would want to show regardless, the total. Mm -hmm. uh, but then maybe ultimately when you click on it, I would like for it to expand and show analytical, post-analytical, and pre-analytical, which are the components of the total. So you want to see only the total tier and overall tier? Is it? Yeah. Just show it by default, the overall, and then if the user I mean, clicks on it or does something, have it expand to see the components? Is, it, is, is that possible in Tableau or would I just have to leave all the, the rows? No, we can do it. Like, uh, there's nothing impossible in Tableau. Like, you have to do some workarounds or think of some logics and stuff. So I'm just trying to think of some logic which can help us on it. Mm. Let me for now we can leave yeah, it. Yeah, like for now, like for now. I can just, uh, for the idea which I get for now is like, I can just create a, another dimension, like having a, another calculated field to show only the totals, the overalls, and have a, another dimension. Like, for example, I create a dimension 2, which shows you only the total and overall. And when you just click on it, like, we have something called hierarchy here. So... I can use, make use of hmm. it. So I guess I can do it, but let me think of it and show you on the next class. Okay. So we have like hierarchy here. So create hierarchy. If I have something like, say, because the reason why I'm thinking is these are on percentages. And yeah, if you're going to just add it together, it won't be right. This will it be right? No, right? 1.4 plus 2.1 will give us the 3.5, but that's what we really need. We need the percentages. So, hmm. so okay, let me think of and give you some alternatives by the next meeting. But as far as the idea which I get now is like having an indicator which will just shortlist the list and show you the values and when you click it it will you'll, you can see the other values too so i can try that and show you on the next session okay yep so as you ask for the threshold values you can just i'm just going to create uh, 
let me try by dragging it here or okay I like to create a calculator field like calculator field is nothing but the the ones which we create using a formula so it's like the formula were on the Excel so I'm just gonna check if my values split one is greater than then we call it test red else green hmm. and end so it's gonna be a just simple if so I'm just giving a condition if the values is greater than my threshold it's red and else it's green like if it's going to be uh, lesser than the threshold I mean am I right yeah if it's going to be yes, lesser, yeah if it's going to be green or even if it's empty it's going to be green so we are okay with that we might need to convert the threshold as well because it might also have a percentage behind it or or did it already consider it as an you see <laughs> I get it yes so we can do the same thing here or let me just have it for now threshold check I'm just going to use the same function which they are created here so I'm just going to copy paste it like this is how we converted the values to the real numbers so I'm just going to yeah. make it the same for the threshold too like let me just check what the threshold looks like which is 0 to 10 but like having clicking here the ones which you can see it will help you to see the all the data which is imported to inside Tableau and I'm just checking where this threshold it should be around here. Threshold it has tablets automatically converted it to numbers, I guess. Let me go back to the data. Threshold to the city on the right. Yeah, I just saw it. This one, right? Uh, here it is. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, it looks like a number. Yes, it just looks like a number. But then it's a, you know, it's like a per percentage number. It's like 95 is 0 0.95, and the other ones are, are now 95. Mm -hmm. So they might need to convert it. This one? You see, they're all less than one if it's a percentage. Mm -hmm. Yes. There the other split values are between zero and hundred. Under, yes. So we could make use of this to check it. So example, I'm just going to change the threshold check. So we have multiple ways, but the one which I get right now the idea which I get I'm just gonna make a another if statement so it's gonna be we call it as nested if but you can have it a if inside if a condition inside a condition so I'm just gonna check if number percentage sorry it give you suggestion if you just type number it's gonna give suggestion equal to number then do this else I'm just gonna copy this and I want my threshold value to be multiplied by 100 or can we just um, like if values dash split one replace it by just values and then if the values are bigger than the threshold, then red, because didn't it, 
didn't it look at didn't it interpret the values as as less than one as well if it had the percentage? It didn't do the same thing. If you have values, it's actually on a string. So if you just have a greater than lesser than, it don't really work for a string. So string is nothing oh, okay. but just text. So I'm actually the value split one, which you could see is actually a number. The hash hash says it's a number, and we have the threshold as a number. So having comparing a string would not really work in our case. So that's the reason I'm just gonna try it and. Like you said something else, like can you just repeat it? Or did I? No, no, it makes, makes sense. No, you're right. Yeah, okay. So let me check. And if you just click on describe here, like I just right click and click on describe, it's just going to give you some information about the oh, field. Okay. And when you click on load, sometimes it shows by itself, or else you have to just click load to see how the values will come. So the expected output from this particular number, percentage number, is nothing but it's going to be number or percentage. So I just going to check it again on my calculation. Threshold check. So did I get the right spelling because it should be exact as I am using the equal to here. So it should be very exact. Let's check how it goes on the colorings. So I'm just hope it's right. So I'm just gonna change the color. So double clicking it will show you the color changing pane. So I'm just gonna make you double. It. You double clicked it or you yes. right clicked it? Double clicked it. Okay. So I'm just gonna make red to red and green to green. So let's check. If it's very similar to the one which we got here, it's it's not ordered, but January is under 0 0.4, 9.22. I guess it's, yeah, kind, of, it's it. kind of correct. Yeah, it looks like it. Or we can even have like each as I I guess I have said it before, but I'm just going to repeat it. So the tableau considers each of the points which we see on the maps, let it be a map or bar charts or let it be a trend lines. Each of the points are called marks. So right now the marks which tableau has just taken automatically, it's a text. So that's why you could see a T here. I can change it to anything. So I just want to try it on squares. So it's going to show you the square here. And if you just recess it, it's going to be like a... Hmm. So you can make it uh, something like this, but when you have it on square, it's good to have it uh, have the values to be on in integers than green and red. So that's the reason. If you could see it here, it's actually making everything the square size is very big and it's showing everything as green, but that's not right. So I'm just gonna change my threshold to something like. Instead of this, I'm just going to make it 1, and else 0. So this will make sure the values are in integers, and the size, the square shapes also works fine. Let's see how it goes. Making it. As I have used the double quotes, is still showing as a string. I'm just gonna take out the double quotes. Now it should be a number. So let me try on the colors. Here we go. Yes, here we go. 
so I'm just gonna color it so if it is a one it should be a red or it's just taken automatically it says blue I'm just gonna make it a red green diverging on the yeah. drop down I'm just gonna it says zero like I'm just if I reverse it we can get the expected output like for us one means it's alarming like you have to check it zero is nothing you are cold with it so you can just change the color I'm just gonna make it a little lighter so it should be showing us the right ones here so two on the month of Jan for the indicator four is red yes it is so this way you can actually make some charts is it fine you get it? Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. So this is a way how you can represent it or even you can take off indicator and it should be or you can just hide it. That would be a better way here. So you can just see only the table and if you just hover over it, you can see the indicator which months, what's the value, what's the threshold check you're doing. And then if you want to center the text in the, the numbers in the, in the columns, how would you do that? Like now it's all right, right outlined. If you want to center it, what would you do? Yeah, just go to click on labels, and on the alignment, you're just going to make it center, and it's center. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, and I would like to give some borders, so I just click on colors, border, and give some black, so it just you just get some border, so it looks a little more neat. So it depends. Like yes. some cases, we like to see with borders. Some games we don't want to, but you can just change it from the colors and you can also change the transparency if you want it to be very lighter. You can do it or even change the color to be like as it is on dark green. You can always choose the, let me check if you have the, I don't really see the light green combination here. So I'm just going to go with the custom diverging. So. I'm making this to be lighter and the red to be also a little more brighter. I'm just gonna apply it so it's kind of a different color and I will just make sure the step colors like the steps color is nothing but when you have it on divergence it's gonna say from red to green how does this come on a on a color scale so it says from red to green if you're going to come you have to cross over the pink blue uh, light blue and then into indigo and then goes to green so we don't really want it I just want to see it on just step colors to be on two so it's going to be either green or on so it's going to be on either red or green so let's see again I'm just going to hide the month's name and if you want to give a really good catchy name or something you can always give it it by default it's just going to take out the name which you have it here sheet one so just sheet name here so which is nothing but it's going to show the just the sheet name here so i can say like i can rename it to indicator threshold how do you do that how do you bring that sorry your Audio is not the, mm -hmm. no, the edit title um, box. How did you bring it up? I you just have to. I can show you it again. So you can see if you double click it, you will just get the edit. Oh, okay. Or even you can just yeah. right click and edit title. So it's like I prefer double click, but you can always right click and use it if you'd like to. So I'm just making it indicator threshold check or maybe some catchy name like even health check so I'm not sure if it's the right name but I'm just gonna give it as health check so this is a very basic worksheet and using this particular fit drop down I'm just gonna make it down entire view so it's kind of it fits the view so you need not to scroll it to view each of them 
and okay so if you really want to hide this green thing you can either make it like let me try it with this I'm just gonna remove the null values let's see how it looks yes so it's gonna be something like this so the empty value should be like it's gonna be very similar here and if you just still you want the borders to be available I can go to the format and go to the borders and make sure I'm just showing every the border black so you can have the borders and still the blank should be on white and we just have only for the values which we have on our data and then the months is there any way to reorganize them because our fiscal year runs from June from July through June so it's not January through December is there a way to make it start in July and end in June yes you can either drag and drop it and change it manually each of them like this is a way you can just oh, okay. or you can even I'm just making it right click it so, sorry it should be here sort sorry I'm just sorry my mistake so I'm just going to right click on the month sort and you can just change it to manual and make sure you can bring down 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 so it's just going to show it like this so did you say it starts from June starts July and ends June okay and I'm just going to bring it to the area so if you just keep it okay so it's going to see from July to June okay and the other thing which hits my eyes is like this July and August they are not unique I mean to say this is on capitals and this is on yeah. the title case so I'm just gonna write a small like what to say a small calculator field to make this to be a normal so I'm just gonna write months right click create calculator field so on this particular drop down you can always you need not know each of the functions like how it works or where it is you can always use the drop down so I'm just going to string and let me check I'll just make this bigger. I'm using the yeah. so I'm just gonna try how can make it a title case. You can just always see an example here. So you need really need not uh, like what to say understand each of the function on the beginning itself. So as you use it, you'll just understand it. But on the initial stage, I'm not going to explain everything very soon, but I will explain most of them. So let me check which will match with the ones you want. Fine. Frame mapper is going to make it upper. Yeah. I think it's upper yeah. or lower. Upper or lower. <laughs> or I can just create some simple formulas to make the first letter to be an upper and second to be an lowest that might work though. So I'm just thinking of that. Left length split it. Maybe split function will be helpful, I guess. No, not really. So you need to combine some multiple two functions to make it possible. I guess I can. So I can show you that maybe I just have to play with it to think how can I do it to make the first letter to be capital and others to be smaller. But for right now, I'll just go with the upper to save our time. So you cannot have a very same name as which you have in the data. So it's going to just throw some error so when you have an error on the calculations you just say the calculation contains error when you click on it it's gonna say a field name months already exist uh, so I'm gonna make it like either you can give month space even having a space will make the names to be different 
so visually if you just make it it's going to be similar it's the space is not really visible but you have a equal to sign here the abc so which clearly says it's a calculated field like the one which you have created so i'm just going to replace this with here so I'm just if you just drag and put it to over away from the view it's going to be deleted so it's deleted oops the order so i'm just going to do the order again make it to be down Close it. So it's kind of neat, I would say. And regarding the tool tip, which you can see here, it's saying the value split one. We don't really want the users to see it, so we can just click on the tool tip. So we can ch make changes to it, like say, I want it to be indicator value or something like that. Or indicator results, so I'm not sure of the right terms. So I can even take this thing off, if I really want, don't want to show it. I can just make it like something like this. So our tooltip is like it's modified based upon our needs so it's just as number indicator of this the results are 84 or so again like on the right can you edit the legend this one yeah you can, can yeah. You make it say instead of 0 and 1 uh, 0 I mean the green equals means compliant and red means non-compliant Mm. Instead of saying the number? Yeah. Right now, on this particular, this is on a worksheet, we cannot really make changes or okay. add and text to do that. But when we go for a dashboard, say I'm just going to show you dashboard. So I just drag dropped it. So on the right, you can always see the sheets which are open to be added to the dashboard. So I'm just clicking on show dashboard title so that I can have a separate title. When you have multiple worksheets but if you just want to have a title it will be useful but right now I just don't want it and if you really want to have this one you can have this or you can just remove it and, yeah, okay. and you can just maybe add a text here on the right and say non-compliance and compliance I just use the text here on the objects pane Okay. And I'm just gonna give a legend something like this. And I can color it. So I'm just gonna click on the color box and using the more colors, pick screen color, I'm just gonna say red. Sorry, oops. It should be green. So I'm just gonna No non compliant is red. That was good. Oh, it's so a fine then. Thanks for that. Yes, no, thanks. Yeah. The more colors, pick screen, green, rotate, it, okay. And legend is like just gonna make it bolder. Or you can, you can always use the keyboard shortcuts just like you use it on the Microsoft Word. Just gonna be, it will be or even underline if you wanted to. And I want this is actually on the showing it here I just want it to be on the top so right clicking it for one text object so I want the alignment to be shown on the top so on vertically show me on the top and let it be this on the left horizontal let it be left so here we go yeah, okay, great. and on the view my screen of the laptop screen is actually smaller so I guess that's the reason why, why you could see the scroll bar but if you wanted to be make sure it fits my screen, I can I always use the automatic so it fits my screen and looks neat without any scroll bar. And I can just well, make great. changes like this. Or in some cases, like basically, we would not prefer to have an automatic size because 
the view which you see here will not be same for the end users because they will have a different resolution screen resolution so which can make them to look to be very longer or smaller so the suggested size would be like go to fix size and make it something like the desktop browser or even even go with like say 700 or something and so you can be very sure the view which you see is the view which will the end users will get so that's a reason we go for the fixed size but if you guess you are fine with the automatic it's okay but for the, on the initial stage we'll just go with the automatic but if you want to make reports i would suggest you to go with the fixed fixed size reports uh, okay So either you can just have it here, or even you can have it on the top. Or you can just make it like something like this. So it's going to be something like this. So they just have it here, or if you don't really want to be shown on the top. Yeah. I, now it looks good. So you can just save this as a dashboard and share it with your end users. I'm just gonna save it locally. So Steve one. And it's good to save it as a package or book because our data, I guess it's like let's have it as a static right now. If you make any changes to the workbook and you right now it's on the live connection as which you could see it yet. So whatever changes which you make it on the Excel will be always be replicated here. But when you save it as an export, like say the package workbook, sometimes I have seen like the file will not be refreshed. So I would suggest you to go to the edit connection and repoint it to the file so it will update properly so in some cases yeah, okay. or you can always go ahead with the TWB so we are very sure that using TWB will make sure that when you have the file and it's on live connection the file will be updated so you really, really need not care if it's getting updated or not it will be updated when you go with, with extract connection like Tableau will make its own offline data of your file like say instead of having it in Excel consider it as a huge database and the time will be let's say it's gonna take like 5 to 10 seconds to reach so if you have it on an extract it's gonna say I'm just have click extract and if you click on your sheets it's gonna ask you the path like I'm not sure why didn't it ask you that like if I'm right uh, the reason why usually if you have it on a TWB you will be asked for the path to save the extract file as you have on a package workbook it's not showing up but the symbol which you could see here like two cylinders with an arrow so it says that it's a extract connection when you have it as a live connection it's going to be like something like a, just a small cylinder can you see it here and uh, where do you see the the live connection where do you see the live connection versus the oh how do you get that view if you just go to the data source view which okay. uh, it's the same screen which we got on the initial setup so if yeah. you want to change it to that you can always use the data source here or even you can just right click it and if you just click on use extract it's going to go to the extract view you could see it here so if I remove it it's going to be just a single cylinder that's a database like data source yeah data source to be precise you just click on use source it's gonna say it is to have a downloaded copy like the extracted copy so that's why we see two cylinders right yep 
and the blue tick which you could see it here the small blue circle and red tick which says that that's the data source when you have multiple data sources so let me just add some thing. oops I just have it again let me just copy paste it I can change next slide. So, like I have not uh, completed the process of connecting the tables, but just for our understanding, I'm just going to show you. So, if you could see it here, so when you have multiple list of data sources, the one with the blue tick is the data source which we have used on the worksheet. So, the dimension and measures of this particular uh, data source has been used here. So, that's what the blue tick means. Am I clear with it? Uh, yes. Yeah. So if you're gonna just use the dimension measures of this, so the blue tick will be actually gone here, and we have something called data blending where you can combine two different data sources. Even you could do it here by even say. If you just drag drop, you can just combine it here. So it's going to be something like this. So we have actually, this symbol is actually table symbol. It actually says like you have combined two different sheets. As we have combined the uh, same name sheets, you are seeing like trending 2015 to 16, trending 2015 to 16, one. If you... Oh, okay. uh, if it's going to be different sheets, as you said, like if they have an overlap, say the blood culture and the clotted specimen, I guess, the this particular field A, they have a very same name. So we can always combine it. I like to show it later on this class, but this is an example which I just want to show how it's... Yeah, it's great. So yeah. in the future, I can create a file for each year and then link them mm -hmm. and do the full outer maybe and then have the data set for all the years combined but, but still as individual files year by year. Mm -hmm. Yes. So there are two ways like there is something called union and others called joints. So joints should be handy when you have say table A and table B and table A has have some 10 columns and table B has come 20 columns or say just two columns and they have a one particular column in overlap or say a common field so you can join them whereas as your case you said like you're gonna add different years 2015 14 16 so they have like say file A or maybe I'll go with some other name X Y Z, so X gonna have 2014 data, Y gonna have 2015 data, Z gonna have 2016 data. So, as you, we have right now, if I'm right, like we have used the, consider we have used the Y file and you wanted to use the X and Z, but all the three files have the same number of columns. They have like 10 columns. They have the exact same columns. So, we really need not join them, we just have to union them, just have to add them. So union is nothing but just like adding them. So union will work when they have the exact structure of data. Like I just, I have never get a chance to use the union, but for your case, I guess union will be useful. So I'll just show you on the next class about how the union works. So the ones which you could see like new union and Let's see how it's useful for you. Is that fine? Yeah. Sorry, Steve, you're not audible. Oh, yes, uh, this is great. Mm -hmm. So, am I clear with the differentiation between the unions and joints? So, joints would help yes. you on the, when you're joining two different tables, which has a common field. Union is nothing but adding, like, say like different years data but they have a very same structure and you're just gonna 
add it to the bottom say for example it's gonna be trending tools in 15 to 16 and if you're gonna add the tool 16 to 17 it's gonna be like adding to the bottom of this sheet so union is nothing but having the same columns in the structure and you're just gonna be adding it to the below it so that's how the union works so I'm just removing it and just, just undo it okay so I'm just undoing it so I just So you can always edit the title and make it to be bolder or change the color or if you want it to be like if you right click it and go to format title you can always have the shading so if you want to have on black I'll make the text to be on white make it a center line so you can have something like this so you could have different uh, say like different we on my particular case we have something like a dark blue with white font so that's how on every dashboard the title would be on with the same unique title colors and background so we'll try to uh, maintain the consistency so based upon your company companies like what to say the standard color standards they use you can always stick to it or even you could add a logo here maybe say if you have it as an image you can just go to I'll just explain what's the difference between tight and floating on the next classes but for the purpose of the example I'm just gonna make it floating and images I'm just gonna select some random image Oops, I don't know I think I don't have any pictures right? I don't have a picture right now to show you sorry for that but if you have an image like you just just can place it here maybe it can be a logo or it can be like copyrights 2014 to 16 like if you have something to be shown as an image or if it's going to be text you can always type it here if it's going to be image you can just make use of this and have it at the top or, or at any place which you like okay great yep it's like I think I will just close up our class now and we can catch up by tomorrow like what was it okay so we agreed 10 p.m. tomorrow and then 11 a.m. on Tuesday right yeah oh, sure wait. okay I'm good with it yeah so do you have okay. any questions on this particular sessions if it's there, I can help you on that uh, no, it was very helpful. Mm -hmm. Or maybe on the next class I can just help you to make, I will help you how to make the percentage come here. Like, I guess it's not really tough, but I, it just takes some few seconds though. I can make sure that you get your percentages, show that the user can differentiate between the percentage and the normal integers. And even I can make the threshold to be visible on the right side, so it will be the ideas would be we can make this dashboard a better one and we can go the as you have the image which you send we can try with this kind of charts on our next class maybe that would be great yep sure so I can email you this file so that you can play around with it and even you could try it so that would be helpful for you when you get time you can just make something and even you can we can discuss on the next session okay great yeah okay Steve let's meet up tomorrow same time okay perfect thank you and uh, see you tomorrow I'll yeah, see you take care yeah, have, we, uh, have a good night have a good night or a good day <laughs> <laughs> it's okay good night to you yeah bye see ya <laughs> okay bye bye bye, -bye.